Welcome to springtime in Kansas. Farmers have been anxiously awaiting for the end of winter so that they can get out in the field to start planting crops. The fields and the trees are turning green again and the temperatures are starting to rise. April also means spring rains, which are very important for the wheat that is already planted and the corn that is to be planted soon. As you can see, a peaceful springtime rain is not always a guarantee. Various weather threats like hail, which you see here, snow, and freezing temperatures all pose threats to the crops that are trying to grow. This month we received all of the above, and much of the wheat in Kansas was damaged. Lack of moisture was the biggest culprit of failure for most of the wheat, as some parts of Kansas have only received a few inches of moisture in the last year. Luckily, our wheat has survived the serious weather, and although we wish the moisture would come in a friendlier way than ice and snow, we are thankful for whatever we can get. Farming is an occupation that is extremely reliant on the weather cooperating. However, it rarely does, and farmers are known to complain about too much moisture, too little moisture, the wrong type of moisture, the wrong timing of moisture, and so on and so forth. But, at the end of the day, it always brings a sense of accomplishment to a farmer to have brought in a successful crop despite the weather, and there is always thanks to be said about the one who gives you anything in the first place. Spring cleaning is definitely something that takes place on a farm and the jobs can get pretty dirty. Here is my dad and my brother Kendall cleaning out our cattle semi, otherwise known as the pot. This side we already did. all of that out. There's the other clean side. And it could get cleaner, but it's plenty clean. That was scooping poop out of the pot. Then my kid picks it. April is also a month spent preparing for the upcoming months of field work. Here is an interesting clip showing how one of our loader tractors transforms into a swather used to cut hay. First the loader is set down on the ground to relieve pressure on the hydraulic hoses. The hoses are then unplugged and the loader is detached slowly. It's a tractor. Once the loader is removed, a swather is hooked on to the back, or technically front, of the tractor. My tractor is hooked up backwards. As Nathan jokingly said, the tractor does look like it is hooked up backwards. The swather is hooked to the front of the tractor so that the other swather can be applied to the other side. It looks backward and is kind of confusing, but we think it is one of the cooler pieces of machinery that we have. And here's the finished product. One swather, backwards tractor. Pretty cool, huh? After maintenance is done on the swathers, they will be ready to cut hay in a few weeks. This year has been a hard year for farmers. With little rain last summer, there was not nearly enough feed grown to feed the cattle for a whole year. This means that we will have to stop buying cattle until we can get more feed. But to prolong the feed we do have left, we take the cattle out to the new grass that is growing in the pasture, shown here. The cattle will be loaded up onto this trailer and taken to the grass. There you have it. Hooked on, ready to go. 
As you can hear, my mom is videotaping this scene. Both my mom and my sister are active on the farm, as well as in the kitchen cooking for us four hungry dudes. Here's my dad loading up the cattle. Pastures are expensive, just like any other piece of land, and we only have a few, which means we must manage them well when we graze them with our cattle. We employ a rotational grazing system on our farm to help maximize the use of each pasture. The pasture is split up into different sections, or paddocks, that the cattle will be rotated around. The paddocks are divided by an electric fence powered by this solar charger. Well, that's all we have for April. Thanks for watching, everyone.